Hello, Poso. Um, my name is John Teller. I've um, been doing the Menominee language for many years, as you can see, um, and culture. Um, did a lot of years at the high school, some years at tribal school. Uh, I was chairman of the tribe for a couple of years, 20 years ago. Um, worked here at the college for about seven, eight years. I'm currently at Head Start, early childhood, uh, teaching language. And it's, well, light duty, I guess. Uh, it's, not, it's not a real vigorous job at this point. I'm not like a high school or college professor. Um, although I've done that. So now I'm kind of winding down, let's say. Um, so uh, that's enough of an introduction. Uh, I made a little handout for you. Um, but Dr. Candy, my sister-in-law, asked me to come in and talk about a little bit overview of Menominee language and then a little bit about Menominee English, uh, what I, my take on it, which I agree with her in, in almost all respects. Uh, let me just go through my notes here quickly. I, I don't think I'm going to talk 45 minutes. I'm not known for being long-winded, I hope. <laughs> but uh, my estimation is 20,000 years the language has been here. 20,000 based on um, archaeology record, ar archaeological record, uh, radio radiocarbon dating, you know, the whole thing. So it's a very old language, and uh, of course it's Algonquian language, similar to Ojibwe, Potawatomi, um, similar to Mohican maybe a little bit. Um, Algonquian language covers Blackfoot, Cheyenne, uh, some of those tribes, uh, Cree, Canada, so a lot of Canada and a lot of the northern states. Um, and even, well, I want to say Menominee and Cree are pretty close. Menominee, Ojibwe, some of the words are exactly the same, some are totally different. Uh, Potawatomi is in there too as far as Algonquin so that's what we're dealing with um, I was born in 1954 grew up here and I want to say when I was 9 or 10 years old my grandparents spoke my, my dad and my dad uh is Menominee and my mom's Oneida, but uh, the language was kind of vibrant. I mean, there, they had, I want to say, two, three, four hundred people in our little bitty tribe of 3,000 at the time. A lot of them spoke. You know, uh, you could hear it uh, often on the street, uh, mostly the elder, elderly people, even back then, were speaking. And when I went to school, you know, one of the common phrases was on it up, you know, how you doing and Nitnawano and Wawanin, uh, you know, those, you hear, you'd hear those words uh, often. I don't want to say every day, but often, you know. Um, so it all seemed kind of good, you know. I, I want to mention um, John Satterley. And he was born in 1852, just a few years ago, if you think about it, you know. Um, heard about the time of the reservation being formed here. And he was uh, quite a character. Storyteller. He worked with all the uh, archaeologists and linguists that would come through the reservation. Well, they say, go see John Satterley there. He's, he's, he's good at this stuff, you know. He was very outgoing, let's say, you know. He spoke good English and he spoke pure Menominee. Um, so he died about 1940. 
and, and he left a, quite a legacy of uh, writings, interactions with, like I say, archaeologists, linguists, and he's well noted for having the vision back in uh, 1900, you know, uh, 120 years ago to begin saving the language. He realized the language was, was even back then was kind of going downhill a little bit. Uh, and he even at a school, an Indian school in West Branch up here on the reservation. Uh, I don't know what year, but I want to say around 1900, maybe 1910, you know, right around there. I don't think the school lasted for years and years and years, but he had an Indian school where he'd teach half the subject was in Menominee and half was in English. So he was, he was a, his name must be uh, brought up when we talk about language and teaching. Today, there are only two, three native speakers left on the reservation or anywhere else. Uh, kind of a sad day in, in that regard. Um, and I've had, I've had the pleasure of working with many of them in the last, you know, 40 years. You know, um, um, with quite a, quite a few of uh, uh, the elders in the community that spoke. Um, and I'm going to say myself, over the last 40 years or something, you know, I think it's been a mountain to, to learn this language. The language is daunting. The, the grammar complex I'll get into a little bit of that later, but um, but I, I want to say, just from off the top of my head, there are probably ten to fifteen, maybe more. Uh, I want to I want to say, second generation fluent speakers, weren't raised with the language, but they've dedicated their lives to 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 the language. Um, Joey Wanape, uh, Ron Corn, younger, a little bit younger guys than me. Dave Greeno, um, Karen Washington, uh, there's, there's a, quite a list, Rose Wakey. Um, so, and you want to talk about a ton of resources that are available. We have dictionaries, we have online dictionaries. We have, we have there's a guy here, a German guy by the name of Leonard Bloomfield. He spent two summers here. He was a genius linguist. Uh, he learned the language in two summers, you know, uh, three months. He lived with the elders, and he, he, he recorded and or wrote, not, not so much recorded as wrote things down. He made four books, a grammar guide, a dictionary, a stories book, and, and so forth. And he really did a tremendous job in preserving the culture and the language, which go hand in hand. The culture has to be with the language. Uh, it's hard to separate the two. Um, so we're, we're very fortunate today that we have a, a ton of resources, videos, old recordings that have been preserved for the last 40 years or 50 years, you know, and we're, we're, we're blessed in that regard. So in some, in many ways, the language is, will never completely die out. There's always, you take a room of people like here, there's gonna be one of you that has that piece of the brain that just is able to learn language, whether it's uh, Spanish or, or, um, or um, another French, you know, uh, or Menominee. You know, some people just have, that's what I've found over the years, they're each, uh, you take 10 people and there's going to be one or two, maybe three, that, that have the gift. And that, that, that's, that's encouraging too. Um, and even in my little Head Start classrooms, there's always one kid that remembers all the words. Then the others will repeat, you know. So once you find that one you, and you kind of focus on them and they say the word, then the others will say the word, you know. And probably the same with teaching. Uh, you, you're all going to be teachers at Early Head Start? Yeah, maybe, no, not Early Head Start, all over the place. Some of them may go back to Head Start. Oh. But they're going to be teaching. Education. Education. 
Good luck. <laughs> it's a hard job. Um, I think the pay is okay, but um, it's. Uh, I, I think uh, teaching your subject is the easy part. Uh, following the uh, curriculum guidelines and the rules of the school and dealing with kids, dealing with parents, that's kind of the hard part. Uh, but if you're dedicated like you are, you'll do just fine. Um, in 1997, 96, 97, an organization was started uh, through the government here in the reservation uh, called Menominee Language and Culture Commission. And when it first started, we had uh, almost all of them on the commission, there were nine members, they were all fluent speakers. Um, and they controlled curriculum and anything to do with culture or language. Everything had to go through the commission. Uh, anybody trying to do outside research, um, non-Indians, they'd have to get approved and, and have an agreement what are you doing here? Why are you studying us? Uh, they'd have to get approval from the Language and Culture Commission. And that body is still up and running to this day. Um, and Dr. Candy had a hand in that. I had a hand in that, in forming that. I'm kind of proud of it because it's, uh, it's a good thing. Many times in the past, researchers would come up here, archaeologists, linguists, uh, people seeking history. They just come come in here and start writing things and um, printing books, you know. I don't think any of Menominee books, you know, made the best seller of the, in the United States, but the point is, sometimes what the people wrote, especially in the uh, 1920s, 1930s, it wasn't always quite accurate. You know, they, they, they didn't get the full correct story all the time, or they didn't do enough research. So anyway, th there's no more of that happening where somebody can come up here and just gather information, take pictures, and then go make a movie and uh, call it accurate because it needs everything needs to be approved these days. <coughs> <coughs> I had my COVID shot uh, vaccine already, so I'm safe. I, I'm, um, so did you, uh, Dr. Candy? Yeah? Yes, did. did you get the second one? Ooh, anybody get a shot yet? No, a uh, vaccine? No. no. Uh, such as the, su such are the times. Uh, with regard to Menominee then, in 1976, 1977, about the time when the Menominee Indian School District was formed, there was some visionary people on the school board and they said, we want Menominee language. So a major effort was launched back then to begin training teachers. Uh, I took advantage of that. Uh, I was just finishing up my education degree and um, I joined the program for about three months. Then they threw me into the classroom. <laughs> uh, the first day of class, I had a note card, right? An uh, index card. Koso, Ani, Nop, Nitnawan, you know, I had everything written down because I was oh, nervous, you know. It's only 24 years old. The students, some of them were 19, you know. <laughs> so, uh, whether it was language or any uh, teacher, you, you, you over, over prepare the first few days and after that you can kind of go with the flow and you, I, I didn't need no note card after a couple of days. Just uh, did my thing. Uh, so, in like I said, 1977, a major, major effort was launched uh, with some federal grants, Title IV grants and all this stuff to train teachers. And, and there was there were four of us in the first class, and Rose Wakey, Karen Washington, what the, um, I think Jerry Hapatas was one of them, and some others. 
and they put us in the classrooms and start teaching um, animals and numbers and colors and uh, things to the uh, students, you know. Aninab, Ninawano, and a lot of the basics, but as the years went by, we developed more and more sophisticated lessons. And we had, a, in high school, we had a level four, a four year program. And that one year, that girl, she was in the three, three year program and she gave her um, uh, commencement or valedictorian address in half, in, half it was a Menominee and then she translated to English, uh, Michelle Wiesel. Uh, and that was cool. But over the years, all the schools on the reservation, and including the college and uh, Stevens Point, including this college, I mean, St. Anthony's School in the open, they had their own language program separate from, um, from the district and separate from the tribe, uh, you know, their Catholic school. A lady by the name of uh, Mildred Kakatosh was the teacher up there. Um, did great, you know. And, um, but like I said, Menominee Indian School District started a pro language program in 1976-77. Tribal school has always, since their inception, they've been doing language heavy. Head Start, over the years, has made a good effort to do language. Um, Milwaukee Indian Community School, um, they've been doing this so I want to say at least 20, 20 some years, 25 years maybe, Menominee. College of Menominee Nation, UW Stevens Point. Um, I might have missed one or two, but those are some of the educational institutions that come to mind uh, that have done language. So it's a, a significant deal. And the Menominee story of language history uh, is very similar to any other reservation. Um, even the um, even the Navajo, you know, big tribe, and they have hundreds, thousands of speakers. They're starting to lose it too. So they're having uh, Navajo classes uh, down in uh, their reservation. There's a it's just a uh, there's a several national organizations out there that are have conferences and they're all that kind of stuff and uh, to promote and preserve and network and share and preserve and maintain the language. Um, which kind of leads right into um, immersion program. Maybe some of you have heard that heard of that. Uh, maybe your kids are even in there, but um, it started in 2017, you know, a, a few years ago. Small, one one room, couple teachers, little infants. I think they had to be nine months old to be in there. Um, and not, today we have a one classroom, a Head Start classroom with immersion in it over there. Um, four or five year old, four, four year old kids are in the Head Start immersion. Um, and I, I work in the building there and I hear them there, they're talking language to them little kids all day long. And the parents get training too. So that's another, it's gonna be interesting to see. Uh, hopefully these kids are gonna be uh, five, six, seven years old and they're talking to each other in Menominee. And uh, the first thing is gonna be said, hey, are you talking about me? <laughs> <laughs> and, and they'll say con, con. Uh, so that's kind of a nuts and bolts overview of the language program history now a little bit more of the technical side of things uh, the Menominee does have a spelling system um, known as orthography 17 letters, 17 characters whatever you want to call them very, very similar to English, um, but the Q sound is different. Uh, um, and I, one class I was teaching here at the college, uh, 
it was about this bigger group and uh, we were going through language, story, conversation, whatever it was. And I was talking about the alphabet and I, I indicated that the letter Q is called a glottal stop. When you say the word on it, not. Right in the middle, you can hear that on it. It's kind of like you stop your breath. On it, not. And that's a that's a, a peculiar, so, a particular sound unique to Menominee. On it. And you, when we get into Menominee English, I'm going to talk about that a little bit too, uh, how that's carried over to English. Um, so we're reviewing for one of our tests in the college class here, a Menominee language. And the question was, uh, what letter is, uh, what do you call the Q letter in, uh, in Menominee uh, grammar? And the answer was glottal stop, right? But then one girl says, is it gag reflex? <laughs> the, whole, <laughs> the whole class cracked up. She, you know, you stop your voice, you know, on it. No. Uh, <laughs> it is, it is, she, I knew, she knew what she was talking about. Uh, the English letters not used in Menominee. We do not have the B sound or the D or the F. I got a story about that one too. Or the G or the J and L. I still have a trouble saying that L word. L. Uh, R. V. X. Z. In relation to Chinese, uh, they don't have R's in their language neither, so. If they, if they, if the waiter from a Chinese restaurant asks you if you want fried rice, what do they say? You want fried rice? <laughs> uh, they have no R in their language, so therefore, they substitute the L for the R. Fried rice, meaning fried rice. Um, Yeah, in English, there's 26 characters. And they say English is hard to learn, as we all know. And Menominee is very distinctive. There's no two sounds that sound alike. In English, we have a, 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 all represented by the letter A. In Menominee, a ah is a letter A, A ah is letter A, -E, and um, A, -A, -A. And A sound is represented with an E with a line over it. But uh, so Menominee is much easier to read than English. Um, and just, I wrote down a few basic words. I mean, that everybody should know, the, the, especially the Head Start teachers. I train them every, um, about every two months we have a training. Uh, I'm only in the classroom a few minutes per week. So therefore, I tell the teachers, you got to be the language teacher uh, for these basic words. You know, we're doing, we just finished up animals. Um, the bear is black. Uh, the cat is white. Um, the frog is green, you know, and easy to add on more words, but um, and I tell the teachers, you gotta reinforce these every day, you know, take a minute or two, go through the words, and go on to your other um, activities. So, some basic words of Menominee are poso, poso. In, Eng in uh, Ojibwe, they say buju. Bonjour. In French, we say bonjour. Bonjour, monsieur. Uh, there's some debate about that. If uh, we copied the French people, which were here in abundance you know, during the exploration days, if they say bonjour, did, did we say poso to try to copy them? Did the Ojibwe say bonjour to try to say bonjour? You know, 
So language is always evolving, believe me. Uh, you want to tell somebody good morning, you say hello early, poso meep, poso meep. And, and these are the proper spellings here. Uh, how are you? On it, nop. There's the Q, the uh, gag reflex. On it, nop. <laughs> uh, the a co common answer, I'm fine. Um, Init noano. Init noano. Thank you. Wa wanin. Wa wanin. Uh, I s I'll, I'll be. Uh, I'll see ya. I'll see you. Kinanian, uh, Kinanian. For many years, we said the word wrong, and we were saying Kinanian. That's not the right. I mean, everybody used it, including myself. But finally, we got it refined. So we say the proper pronunciation is Kinanian. I see ya. Hurry up, Wepeta. And live well today. Have a good day. Mahno pamatasanun yope. Oops, I don't have yope on there. Mahno pamatasanun. Oh, there's a couple more on the back page, second page. Kankako. That was another uh, word I heard growing up. Kankako. Everybody used that, you know? Then, of course, numbers. Uh, all, towns and cities, uh, Kishina, Nyopit, Shano, uh, Swamiko, Waiwiga, Menesha, Sheboygan, Man Manitou, I was going to say it in the Indian version, but Manitowoc, all the names, they're all Indian, Menominee, they've changed. For Kashina, even Kashina, we're supposed to say Kashina. Uh, Neopit is supposed to be Neopit. Um, Okano is supposed to be Okato. Uh, Manitowoc is supposed to be Manitowoc. You know, so talk about language evolving. Well, there's some good examples right there. Um, so a lot of towns and cities have Menominee names. And then, of course, uh, Mahnoasekia. Uh, and of course, that's changed too to Manasakia, right? If you're familiar with that program, Manasakia. And I tell people, no, 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 it's Mahno Wasekia. And that means we feel healthy. Well, and then um, another common word many people know is Apishanaquit. <laughs> my, my friend, Black Cloud. And then names. Modern Indian names, uh, the word we use for Mary would be Mani. The word for Peter, P-N. Uh, John would be Sapatis, based on John the Baptist. Sapatis, John the Baptist. Um, William would be um, William. No L's, you know, right? No L's, so they couldn't say William, you know. They could say William, William. Uh, Alex would be Anik, Anik. So before we go any further, I want to, I want to get back to my story. Uh, a story, uh, remember I said there's no F in Menominee. You wouldn't believe that today, the way they hear some of the kids talk, but... They use the F word uh, frequently. But the story is these elderly couple, I don't know if they were, they might have been drinking a little bit or something. They had, had an argument. And the man's name was Alex. And his wife, uh, she got real mad at him. And somebody was listening to them argue. Finally, that lady, the old lady got so mad, she says, uh, Fuck you, Anik. <laughs> yeah, she they couldn't say the F, so she put a P in there, yeah. And the guy's name was Alex, so it's Anik. We'll end up saying, fuck you, Anik. That's my... I got a, I got a lot of the Menominee stories. 
Uh, okay. There's, could go on more and more about Menominee language, but no, one of uh, Dr. Candy's favorite subjects, he has many, but Menominee Indian English. Now there's a lot of truth to some of the uh, prophecies that she espouses. <laughs> uh, for one thing, the, the consonant sounds, I mentioned that already, like, and it's still in our blood, it's in our DNA as a native person. Sometimes them sounds just aren't in the DNA, such as the, uh, the L, and maybe the Y, um, B or D, and you know, so forth. And I think if a person listened carefully, especially a native speaker that's talking English, you know, that you're going to hear uh, accent or di different sounds. And you'll hear accents anywhere. And some people are so good, they can, they can tell, you're from Texas, right? You're from West Virginia. You're from California. You know, and they can kind of tell, you know, you're from Fargo, North Dakota, eh? I mean, so each part of the country does have a distinct dialect or accent. Uh, speech patterns, speed, and accent. Now, <laughs> I heard Dr. Candy mention before, and I, I can, I'm the same way. If there's a Menominee talking, you, you can tell. <laughs> you can, you can uh, tell it's a Menominee. And, and the, and the local, the, the WTCH radio, the Shawna radio station there, they have a call-in show for a rummage and all that. And that one guy called up, all right, you got any more of those tires for sale? What's your number? 799. Uh, so, <laughs> it turned out it was uh, Can Can Dr. Candy's cousin, <laughs> Frank. <laughs> uh, I, but it's it's uncanny can you you can tell Menominee accent dr candy can you yeah yeah it's uh we don't know it i mean there are some outsiders here at the college and i i, I got to know this person she, a red-headed lady i said because i thought it was uh special i, I said I, I speak a formal register you know no 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 i i can you you say all all them uh, Menominee words Really, I, I couldn't tell, you know. But uh, he says one of the one of the common words you use all the time is "holy man." <laughs> I said, "Holy man, do I really?" <laughs> he, said, he just he just did it, you know. Uh, I think when I was younger, I would speak fast, uh, a little bit faster, fast, faster speed uh, in English. And I, one of the things I hate are the phones, you know, I'll say, what is your name? And, and I'll say, John Teller. Jay Taylor? You know, they, they don't recognize my voice. I, I hate that. Uh, uh, and also, uh, word order. Uh, and a good example of that first, second word, we looked, we looked at posomik uh, means hello early. That would be the proper way to say that, uh, as opposed to early hello. So word order is, in Menominee, is opposite English. It's, it's the opposite. The subject to verb agreement is usually verb first, and the subject can be last. Uh, in our modern times, we've changed it to, to match English, you know. If I want to say that the dog was running, uh, uh, he was running that dog. That, that, that'd be the proper way to say it, you know. Case, case he, he was running in no anem. Case no anem. That, that's the proper way. What we've kind of done in the recent years is uh, we can say in no anem, case 
So it sounds more like that dog was running him. Because I've heard people say, Case what I pay, does that mean dog? Oh, no. I mean, that, you know, so the word order is, in many native languages, is not the same as English. Okay, some of my favorite slang words, some of them are current, some of them are used in the past. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, do you, I mean, you hear that, you know. Uh, I don't know if you hear that any other places. I, a lot of reservations use that. Oh, uh, I don't know if you use it in downtown Chicago or not, you know, I don't know. Uh, an old one. An old word that used to be very popular. I don't think it's used too much no more. Scoop, scoop on your horse. Uh, there's some girl up here and she telling tell somebody I know, I met somebody, I think his name is Horse. Because everybody is calling him a uh, scoop on your horse. <laughs> so, that's just the thing. Uh, another slang word we hear is uh, yay. And people say, well, what does that mean? Yay. It means just what it sounds like, you know. Oh, I won, uh, I won uh, $10,000 at the casino. Yay. <laughs> you know, kind of like you're, you're uh, BSing me or something, maybe. Uh, if somebody gets afraid, they might say, you. <laughs> uh, is a Menominee word, but I don't know what it means. Uh, um, uh, put your shoes away, Pena. You know, tell your kid or something, or, or your children, put your shoes away, Pena. It, it, pena gives ac emphasis to the command, you know. Kind of like, put your shoes away, I said. You know, pena. <laughs> this one I still hear, scooped in. Scooped in, uh, what's going on with you, you know? <laughs> and I, was, I asked a few people, what are some of the words you, you hear around? And so people were telling me, I, I made the collection on the next few days ago. Way. <laughs> Way is, is, is one of the slang words too. And my favorite is yes. <laughs> Walking down the street one, or up in the open one time, uh, these two older, uh, middle-aged women were talking. Nah, 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 nah. I couldn't hear what they were saying, but every now and then each one of them would say, yes. <laughs> then the other one would say, yes. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's some of the local words here. And of course, uh, ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. And of course, if you watch the movie Fargo, they, they really overdid their accent there. Going up the Brainerd, check on that squad car, eh? You know, that's kind of how they talk. Uh, this is my own here. This is a joke. Uh, the next one here down the, li down the list. My uncle, uh, Candy's Uncle Wayne used to always say that, um, Jeet? No, Jew. And what he meant was, did you eat? No, did you? <laughs> Gee, no, Jew. I mean, you might even hear that today. Again, that's emphasizing speed of the language, you know. Way now. And, and you can't just say the, these slang words, neither uh, way now. You got to put the right emphasis and say, way now. <laughs> Wicked, wickedly. It was a wickedly good movie. That means good, you know, wickedly good. Uh, uh, it's 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 going to be a good day today, isn't it? It's going to be a good day, isn't it? And I think in it means, uh, is it not so? Oh, I went to the movie. It sure was deadly. Dead, meaning, meaning good. It was real good. If the movie was good, you say, well, it was a good movie. But if the movie was deadly, that means real good, yeah. And there goes the holy man's. Holy man, holy man's. 
uh, I don't hear this too much no more. The next one, uh, keen, really keen. Keen means uh, something sharp or great, you know. Keen sense of smell. But in Menominee, uh, keen means it's no good. You can be keen. And they put your hand like that, you know. Uh, oh, my other favorite, your old kache. <laughs> that, of course, means uh, your old butt. Your old butt. Your old... Do you still hear that? Not too much, huh? Your old kache. Uh, not even. Did you win any money? Not even. Uh, it means no, I guess. <laughs> the other one is uh, two. Uh, <laughs> uh, maybe you, a person might want to say, uh, I think I'll go get a drink of water too. You went, so I'm going to go get some water too. The other person could say, two. Uh, <laughs> it's supposed to be something I can still hear. <laughs> The next one is called, and again, this is a speed word, um, let's go in. You know what I meant? Yeah, I meant just trying, I'm trying to say, let's go then. Let's go then. Wow. Yeah, you boy. Uh, that kind of means your butt or your eye or something. Yay. Yeah. All these are making me think of Mary. <laughs> is it? Yeah. Um, that's about all I have. Uh, no, no questions. No. Remember they say, uh, I'll give you a dollar if you ask a question. I'll give you a dollar if you don't ask a question. <laughs> it's like, Sook. I was just wondering, because my girls are interested in learning the language, and they're 9 and 12, where could I start for them? Uh, from zero? From zero. They're going to see what the sign word is on the radio. Yoy. Not in school here, right? No, they go to Gresham. How many Menominees are over there? Enough for a class? I mean, maybe they should have a class out there. A small class, though. I mean, even once a week, maybe the Language and Culture Commission could uh, um, send a person out there once a week, you know, to spend an hour or, or couple hours. Um, back when I used to work here, we had just grant money and stuff. We had a great program going called Language Tables, and that was for anybody. We had Zor, Neilbit, Kashina, South Branch, one night a week uh, for a, at least an hour, hour and a half or something. They'd have a, a room, you know, and then the teacher would be there, and then anybody could show up, and um, practice speaking uh we don't have that no more though it was a grant program and that was pretty nice because we you didn't need no experience or you know just show up and there'd be some papers um you can't learn by the book i don't think you know me Is there? Learn by hearing, right? Because there's that website where you, where you can click type on there. it in and it will say it for you. Yeah, we have a dictionary online. It has all the words <laughs> and then the English of Menominee. And then, and then if you click online, a computer, if you click on that, and of course you have speakers, not all the words, but many of the words uh, have a uh, voice. Maybe for a few words here and there, um, but to begin learning. Um, yeah, because your grandma was studying French 
teacher small or something that was once your side and then they passed away so it's been that long since well in the language learning theory a person well, mostly a child i suppose they learn to hear it first you know they hear it hear it hear it um, along with gestures you know if you, if you tell a baby uh, come here come here come on crawl you know ready a couple hundred times and pretty soon they know the word they know what it means they, they can understand mm -hmm. secondly they start to speak then you know the second level third is um uh, read they can read it you know, a little older read and then last the most difficult part is writing the note especially if it's a kind of kind of foreign spelling system hmm I think uh, I'll I'll check on some things with the Language and Culture Commission um, and work with the Gresham School um, schools, and I'll get a hold of Candy and she can let you know if there's any possibilities soon, because I know there's Menominees out there, yeah. along with a lot of Stockbridgers, you know. Yeah, that's um, we're, I work at the Head Start up at Stockbridge, and the language is coming into the, the Head Start right now. But we're trying to figure out how to make sure that it goes. Mohican? Yeah. yeah. Like um, how you were saying the words are similar. Like yeah. some of the words that I'm learning in Mohegan, I'm like, I heard that in Menominee. So, but I'm learning yeah. if it's different, a different meaning or if it's similar. Mm -hmm. uh, I think from my limited comparison of Menominee and uh, Mohican, because I, I know Larry. Uh, They're teaching Mohican and Lenape. Monkeys. Lenape, yeah. And what we're doing within the Head Start is the Lenape monkey. That's what we said. And that's Algonquia too, right? Yeah. 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 So like, um, most so often I've heard that before, but now that in the Lenape too, so I'm like, okay. Is yeah. it similar? Is it the same thing? Is it what, 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 is, what does the word mean? Uh, yeah, what does it mean in Menominee? How do you say it? Mosawapinam. Wapinam? Mosawapinam. Like almost like you're saying mouse. But it's like, I don't know if it's the same, but it's, it's similar, like certain words. It sounds like, uh, you changed a few letters, but it's, it's very similar to something I know in Menominee. I thought, at first I thought you said Wapano, you know? Yeah. Which is a uh, morning time, you know, morning star. Okay. But let me check on that. I, I, I should have brought my binder. I forgot to bring my binder. I'll give a... Uh, Joey want to pay a call. He's the director of that, and um, yeah. see if there's any possibilities to get something started out there. Yeah. At least once a week, minimum. You know? Yeah, and then just um, you think online would be good to start with micro? For like hearing like different things. Well, maybe you know. The, my oldest one is the one that's like really inquiring about it. With language, I think it's it's got to be because it involves it. involves facial expression too. Like my grandma, a lot of people would say the word uh, for water is nape, nape. But my grandma, she wouldn't say it like that. As I remember watching her face, she said nape, nape. And then you get the right sound by putting your lips tight against your teeth, nape. And I heard people like this today saying Nepeu. I never saw that. <laughs> you know, it looks... So I think facial expression and hearing it. And it's so important the first time you hear the word. The first time it hits. I made a mistake one time in the I think I said the word was supposed to be dog, and I said the word for cat or something, you know, but it took a while to break the students from saying it because that's the first time they heard it, you know. So that's critical. Anything? Satisfied? Yeah. Your question. I have questions for you. How many words do you, would you estimate that the Head Start students that you've taken from the time they've been in Head Start or how many words do you think they would acquire 
years. In one year? No, no, it, over that four year, was it four years? Well, let's see. Three years. Three years. What did I send you the paper? Was there like 95 or 100, 120 words on that list? The, the, I do about seven, six or seven words a week, or a month. So 70, 80, maybe 90. 90 of the basic words. And then there's ongoing teacher commands. Sit down, stand up. Brush your teeth, wash your hands, line up, walk, don't run. So, another 20, let's say, plus things in the room, door, lights, so forth. I mean, if they could leave there with a couple hundred words, uh, and then the key is to remember the, you know, uh, I mean, I've heard people say, well, I remember hearing that word in the head start, but I forgot it. You know, because if you're not exposed to it, it uh, use it or lose it, you know. So, I, I mean, if they could leave there with a couple hundred words, basic commands, basic uh, uh, colors, you know, numbers, and um, that's, I'd be happy with that. There are only about 7,000 words in Menominee. If, or maybe less, because one word can turn into 50 or 40, you know? So one time I, I went through the language book, the language dictionary, and I took a highlighter and I went through the whole book and highlighted just the most frequently used verbs and nouns, you know. Came up with about 500, you know. Stand, sit, eat, sleep, bathroom, sick, you know, all the common frequently used words. Was that 45 minutes? <laughs> 45? No. 30? One more, couple more questions. Sure. What were, when you talked about what, when you knew Menominee people or people were talking or Menominee language, <laughs> what was it that you talked about? The accent? You talked about three things, I think. The accent? Uh, patterns, speed, and accent, yeah. So Menominee is not spoken quickly, right? It's, is it spoken quickly or slowly? Some people are pretty fast. I know, I know Tilly Jacazzi for one. Um, may she rest in peace. But she's she was a fast speaker, you know. But but get no no They stuck like that, you know. But others would speak more slow than that, you know. But that was a I think a trait of Menominee kind of can I talk about sometimes uh, if you if you have to, you know. Um, yeah. Then I want you to, um, there's, there's paper right there by your water. Would you read them in a Menominee accent? So like, let me see. Mona, would you take copies and give everybody a copy of it? And give it for us in your Menominee, best Menominee accent. <laughs> well, you can jazz it up just like they did on a Fargo movie, you know. Because I know some Menominees, they really, really have a, a res accent. <laughs> Yo, buddy, let's use your mother's car. Like that. Yo, horse. Let me use your ma's res runner. See, I have to get get down to see my wake hunter buddies and stop and pick up my commots way before they shut her down. You 
You know how them tribal skins are. Roads are getting bad in that restaurant over yours. Your ma's has wicked baloney skins <laughs> on all, all fours. I ain't begging. I don't have the sooner to grab a ride on the quarter horse. Unless I put, put the bite on you. Anyway, I have to get back to Bacon Hound Town and wait for my little sis who's coming in on the prison bus and make her a wake sandwich for lunch. So I have to stop at the C store and pick up some Pokemon bread for her. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have this side of the room. Well, first, let's thank Mr. Kelly. And um, I thank you so much. Uh, this is, you know, this is their field work. This is, they did me, this is a field work that we purchased. But I, uh, before you, I let you go, I want to say this one thing. Will you use that word, I will see you? Say that again for me. Is it Menominee? Yes. Kinanian. I was taking care of his granddaughter, Naomi, this summer, and the kids would be stopping by to talk to us, and she would say that to them every time. <laughs> and she was like four. Kinanian, yeah, well. She would, she would say that, so what an impact you had. That's one of the words I use every day with the classroom. And when I'm, oh, well, now I'm on TV, how we call virtual, Skype. So when I say I see, I'll go like this, Kinanian, Kinanian, and, and they all do it. You know, they kind of, I don't know where I got that, but it's, they like to do uh, with their hands, you know? So, Poso, Kinanian, big, little, wide. And what's that called, that message you use? <coughs> I use a variety, but audio lingual. I say it, you say it, you know, along with uh, pictures and, you know. Well, thank you very much. Okay, this side of the room, come up with a translation. <coughs> this side of the room, I'm going to sit in the chair. Wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Did you 